Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Hi, welcome to Impact Two Grand Prix. Uh, as we were just saying, this is our 158. Yeah. Reese RGM for the hour. Hello, hello, hello! Hello, hello, Reese! Welcome back. My name is Reese, and I am the Games Master for this hour, and all the way up to 10 o'clock. What is this? What are we doing? We are playing a tabletop role playing game. What? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, what does that mean? A tabletop role playing game is basically these wonderful individuals around me play their own special, unique characters with their own abilities and traits and personalities that they apply to the world. I, as the games master, am the rest of the world. I play their allies, the enemies they fight, the islands they traverse, the seas they sail upon, and the multiple, multiple drunk encounters that they have. Uh, we pick up as our adventurers have been sent on a mission to see if they can find a long forgotten priest who seemingly disappeared 10 years ago. This Katafu individual, the Katafu are these troll-like individuals with thick skin, grotesque faces. Some people find them attractive. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> After a drunken night of revelry, they sailed towards the island, found it full of these multiple dead Katafu in various states of decay and fought off these two toad-like creatures who seemingly, towards the end of the fight, as all seemed lost for them, they disappeared. <laughs> They've continued to follow the river in towards the mainland. And in a moment of genius, Wigglebottom teleported himself 200 foot in the air to get a better vantage point and has begun to fall towards the ground. <laughs> Casting feather fall on himself, he begins to slow. Cause I'm free, free falling. I'm going to give our players a chance to introduce themselves, starting with my far left. Tell us your name, your character's name, and what they do on the ship. <coughs> Hi, my name's Ed. Uh, I am uh, playing a character called Gwendolyn Skull, who you may refer to here as a male uh, half-elf fighter. Uh, he is also the master of the Space Shadow Horizon and attempts to uh, keep discipline with us. Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm playing Alistair von de Comte. He is a dwarven bard. He is very undwarfy in his pursuits here. He doesn't like forging or mining. He is the ship's scribe, and he fancies himself quite the, uh, the romantic poet. Uh, my name is James, and I play the legend that is Geoffrey Wigglebottom. Um, he is a human sorcerer slash a rap guru, <laughs> and um, uh, he is the head of the research department's assistant. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, my name is Neil. Uh, my character's name is Nigella, and she is the quartermaster's assistant in the quartermaster job with orders. Yes, yes, it was. Oh, that's, that's how it works. And, <laughs> and, and, and she's human as well. Excellent. <laughs> so, we I'm pick up. Inside. Gwendolyn, as okay. the ship is being repaired, you have been put up in temporary accommodation on the Katafu Island. What were you doing just before this moment? I was um, attending to the call of nature. <laughs> so I may be somewhat uh, incommoded when when I appear wherever we appear. Of course. Bridges around the ankles. and uh, As you're sitting there, bridges around your ankles in a deep squat. <laughs> yes. That's what's, what's happening. You get the familiar metallic taste on the tip of your tongue. Um, the hair on the back of your oh. neck stands on end once again as you are enveloped in a golden flash. <laughs> pull up, pull up, pull up. Nigella and Alistair, you look over, and where you once saw the halfling rogue, you now see a half-elf. <coughs> Gwendolyn Skull, the master of the ship, with his skivvies round his ankles, 
in a no, deep... No, they're at least halfway up. Okay. <laughs> Skivvies round his knees yes. as he pulls himself together. Yes. What you see as you look around is this deep, dense bog. Multiple dead trees around you and spreading out in front of you, you see a deep field of mud and ooze and silt. As you observe the situation, Jeffrey Wigglebottom gently floats down <laughs> beside you. That is a hell of an entrance. Yeah. But can I use prestidigitation to like make some like many kind of lights appear behind me? Absolutely. Yeah. What do they look like? Like kind of little mini fireworks. You intolerable job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Guys, I've been doing some scouting. Um, if we carry it, get over the bog, there's a big like l really large tree, like much larger than the rest, but it's again dying like all the others. Beyond that, a rocky crest. Yes. I remembered that. <laughs> so I think we should head towards the big tree, because the biggest tree is always where the loot is. Is this some kind of... Oh no, okay. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Very much so. It's raining. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was really confusing. <laughs> Sound effects. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking about that a second ago. What's going on? So, how is the party proceeding as you have this deep field of mud and ooze and silt in front of you? Uh, should we not chop down some trees and create some kind of... Something across the bog? Yeah. It, well, firstly, I think there would be a lot of trees, and secondly, the trees are not very stable. They're quite they're they, kind they, of they, dead they through. Are crumbling. Yeah. As uh, you look enough. around, all these trees that are around you are thin and dead and blackened and falling apart. Um, it, I mean, it, mm, can somebody summon a rock? In terms of magic, uh, that I can do, uh, that's what the arcade board is. I see. Um, no, they don't. I'm <laughs> fully aware of this. They, they, don't, they don't know that. <laughs> um, I can... Oh, telekinesis, you can, how, how big is it? How big is what? How big is the bug? Presumably it's bigger than 500 feet, otherwise we'd just be able to turn into It is... Bog. From where you currently s are standing, mm. the bog seems to stretch on for... 100, 150 meters before you reach a tree line. Well, surely. But I'm just, because there's, I can only just bring one person with me, I'll never come back and then bring another person with me and that, that's going to burn me out. Do you have dimension burn? I do not. Well, do you have any useful spells? Uh, <laughs> I ask myself that every time. Burn. <laughs> yeah. He's I mean, I could make it, I've got hallucinatory terrain, I could make it look safe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about what about if um, could you earth tremor something? Or would it just just, that yeah. would just get us very muddy? I, I think it would just sort of I shake things up. I think it would make it. I'm yeah. trying to think outside the box. It's like when you're making pancakes and you got the flour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! But I could cast sleep storm and freeze the earth. Yeah. Does <laughs> that work? I think it no, in might. Fact, yeah, we've done this before. We have. And, and it, it was did massively ineffective at the time. <laughs> <This> time. <laughs> <laughs> One moment as I read the effects of Sleep Storm. What is your objective casting the spell? What are you trying to yeah, achieve? Trying to try freeze the bog, but it's currently I believe it's raining non-stop. 20, 20 foot. So you Until the spell ends, freezing rain and sleep falls in a 20 foot tall cylinder with a 40 foot radius. Oh, what if it's it's radius? It's something. It's 40 foot radius, that means it's 80 feet. Yes. Uh, really? Yes, because ra radius, radius is from the centre of the, the circle, circle to, to the, the, the edge. You go across it? Mass <laughs> fans for you mass people out there. <laughs> I've got a degree. <laughs> Leave me there we go. <laughs> Was it in maths? Yes. Ah. Surprisingly. Oh. <laughs> this is... <laughs> wow, Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> so proud. Um. My mum's not. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing That's characters, dude. Characters. <laughs> My mum's not proud of Jeffrey either. <laughs> <laughs> That's less of a problem. <laughs> Jeffrey's got a lot of issues, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I don't know if you've faced up on that. All of them stemming from the last couple of nights. I think yeah. that is true. The, um, but surely if we pop one of those in front of it... Yeah, I could do head. two of those, no problem. That would be good. And if it's 25 high, we could at least see how deep the bog is. Then I've got a I'd large have stick. Sort of, to I'd have to wade partway into the... Is it a radius from myself? 
Um, the spell has a range, so you can place it in front of you. Oh, awesome. I will do that. Nice. Sleet storm, sleet storm, sleet storm. <laughs> That's how the arcane is cast that, spells. Is, is that truly how you cast this spell? I do. That's how we okay. cast magic. magic. Oh, wait. I've got my hair in a braid, and I sort of flick it around myself. Right now. Because, he, <laughs> because he's worth it. <laughs> Alistair Von de Comp. The dwarven bard with the well-kept beard and a polished braid very poli very shiny. reaches out in front of him. Sleet storm, sleet storm, <laughs> sleet storm. I can't believe that works. And you see the already darkened clouds begin to swirl faster above you as the rain becomes thick and heavy and cold. Hitting the ground in the mud, you right. see that it... <laughs> I <I'd> say... <laughs> Does begin to part it. Thank you. This, this More sleety! <laughs> now it's human wet and cold. Isn't that only on that bit? Yeah, it's going to be a bit. And I'm moving Scotland! <laughs> <laughs> it is turning into Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, Tess. <laughs> then you have to go up the old piece of the mural. Right. Is it doing anything to the bog? Is it just giving Make it a perception check. Okay. More ammunition. Eighteen. You see, as you look 20. out... One. <laughs> as you look out into this deep bog of mud and ooze and silt, the sleet and cold rain hit the surface very hard. And you see, as the mud begins to shift, in these plates and swirls around you see multiple little islands of hardened mud begin to swirl okay. Dave's not first yeah hang on surely what would work is if somebody went with you and then you could dimension door if it all goes south true but I don't want to do that that's fair enough are you sure I can't persuade you 100% sure. <laughs> oh, hang on. Are you sure we have... Give it a shot. Definitely not me. <laughs> because I do believe I bought... Oh, I didn't... Oh, no, I, I seduced I... a troll woman and she bought the drinks for me. Thank you. <laughs> on my and look purpose. how that ended. <laughs> I believe it was on... Uh, hang on, hang on. I, for some reason, I didn't realise this, but I'm very good at persuading skull face. Uh -huh. Let me give it a try. Okay. <laughs> I think I might be better. You look over at You're the master. You're totally better than me. You go, you go. <laughs> you look over at wow. Alistair. What do you say to convince him? Uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey, 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 Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I just narrow my eyes. He goes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Make an insight check. Oh. 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 That's 29, 31. Well, Good luck with that, bud. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. 20. Only 20. 12. I mean, he's your buddy, right? You want to help him out. Okay, well, I'll only do it if you come with me. That's what's happening. <laughs> I say, buddy, Jeffrey, come on. I'm going to cast persuasion. I'm going to try and persuade him to come with me. <laughs> you're going to cast what? No, I'm going to go, go for persuasion. Oh, you're going to so try and persuade I'm only doing it if he's going to come with me. I got... Uh, 25. 25. Nice. I've got a very Make good an insight check. Oh, not good. No, it's He's only going to come if you come with him. Yes! In your face! <laughs> Use it for your own skills. Come on, hold Fine. my hand. Fine. Fine. Also, 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 we have 50 feet of rope. Surely. Uh, oh, we could tie it. Yeah. Okay, we won't do that. No, dude, I'm tying my rope okay, to you. Okay, you go to tie it. Yeah. Why not me? I'm not. You can, you can dimension door. door, you're fine. Yes, but I thought, if I sink and he's left... Oh, I just want more rope. <laughs> Sorry, don't worry. Keep moving. <laughs> this is not good. Right, okay. <laughs> Let's go, Jeffrey. You look out Stop in front of you, button. and <laughs> in this 80-foot circle, as the sleep and hail hammers one. down, can I get dexterity checks from all of you as you try oh. to attempt to manoeuvre across this area? Only one. these two. Yeah. Oh, you have sugar. to come because you have to cast the next one to carry on going. But I only get a five in my deck, so. <laughs> well, I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> God, this is gone really. <laughs> <laughs> it was a valiant effort that at least oh, we had to try. Oh, 
how I enjoyed this game. Sorry, I've got a plan. <laughs> you okay. both make it onto the first mud island, and it swirls. The second, and it just gives way underneath you as you fall into the mud and ooze and silt. You quickly sink up to halfway up your chest. It's almost at your beard. No. I, I, uh, we were holding hands, obviously. Yes, obviously. obviously. Yeah. Uh, and we did some dimension to the other no, no, side no, no, no. Oh. so that he can do the cold thing and they can just pop over. Okay. That way we can't have, they won't have to, they won't be able to argue. Really. You find yourself at the tree line on the other side of this. What bunk. happens to the rope? Yeah. Hang on, let me just think about this for a second. Because <laughs> this is quite important because it's attached yeah. to me. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone's gone and he's just there. The going, rope. <laughs> guys? <laughs> yeah. The rope actually severs. Fine. Damn. As you find yourself rope tied around you on the other side of this bog, you just see them and appear on the other side. Um, Sleet storm. <laughs> <laughs> You look over, and what's the, the range sleet on storm message? Oh, like I'll find out. Don't worry. The fact you got your phone out. You are message. way out of range. <laughs> okay. You look out, and the sleet storm that was cast originally dissipates and moves over towards um, where. Was it gonna be good? You're but it's still gonna be frozen-ish. Yeah. Yeah, I'm less confident about that. <laughs> okay. 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 I thought message was 120. No. I thought it was long. Wait, just, just, just finish that. Okay, dude. I'm gonna try it. Uh, you're gonna use. No, we're not. Because the rope's been severed, yeah. so we've both got 50 feet of rope. If they left us, oh. I told you not to tie the rope. <laughs> no, I'm not there. It's fine. Fair enough. Can well, I shall we just tie? If we tie it to each other, yeah. then we can <laughs> save potentially the other person and like just go it across carefully. Shout, make a constitution roll to see if he can hear you. No, Alistair. Oh, um, it's 120 feet range of message, but they are out of range. Yeah, They're 150, 150 feet away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> constitution. Uh, I would say yep. let's try this first, but one of us stays on shore. I'm good to go. Gwendolyn, can I have a perception check from you? Oh, indeed. You can hear Alistair on the far side shouting out to you. I shout a little poem. Oh, please do. <laughs> Gwendolyn Skull, Gwendolyn Skull, I've seen you aboard on the deck or the hull. Your role as the master steers us safe from disaster, as your faults are near null, my dear Gwenny Skull. I take about ten steps away from him, <laughs> mm -hmm. just in case the thing that has now heard him screaming that through this <laughs> forest of evil things comes to, coming to attack him. I try and look um, wow. innocent. <laughs> in in Congress. Take 1d10 inspiration dice. Wait. Mine's gone from before, isn't it? Yes, yes, it has, because you didn't use it. Wait. You don't use it. So, wait. So, I just got one. Uh, no, you, you save just it for when you need it. it. Oh, fine. Oh, you roll it then. Ah. Yeah. Um, uh, so. Right, I am going Gwendolyn, to Skull, and Nigella, what are you doing on the other side you of this boat? I want to go across. I want to go across. Uh, if I, if and I I'll get to 50 feet away, follow me. Yeah. But otherwise, stay, stay. on the bank. I think yeah. I start with. Alright, I'm going to time to look around me. Oh, yes. Yeah, Splitting the party. Go. What a great idea. <laughs> we can go 100 feet. Yeah, because, well, it'd be like probably about 90 when we're fine. Yeah, because we've tied this together. This is what happened. This is a sign. No, I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we can go about 90 feet. Let's try it. All right, and I'm going to stand ready with my sword for a definite attack, I'm sure. It's going to happen to me. <laughs> you have to run after me due to an attack. Yeah. It's going to work perfectly. Okay. It, does, does the bog look significantly less frozen than it was when the sleep was over? No. Cool. I'll give it a try. I'm going to okay. run out there. Make a dexterity check for me. Seven. Do you have no, I, under no, I, I understand. I, I, the thing is, what I'm not going to do is I mentioned it all previously. Sorry, what, what happened? You begin to run across this frozen mud and you make it about 25 foot out. Wow. At which point, you sink. Excellent. To your shoulders. Wow. Make a strength saving throw. Okay. 
15? 15. You find purchase on the bottom. You're still able to move, but just very, very slowly. Interesting. Can I climb back out onto the sort of crust? The crust. <laughs> make, a str- make a secondary strength check. A secondary strength check? Yes, make a secondary strength check. Oh, that's a 12. You just, every time you try and lift yourself up onto this frozen mud, it just gives way, uh, and okay. you sink back down. Uh, I'd say pull me back in, dude. This does not look like it. Okay, make a strength check. Oh. With advantage, because he is helping you. Uh, just a stru- uh, it can be athletics if you want. Yeah, I'll definitely do athletics. Uh, in which case, that is 26. Guys, this is not the Jelly Baby Circus. <laughs> 26. 26. Nice. Yeah. No problem. You begin to pull him in. You make it to the bank. All right. What are you two doing on the other side? I'm watching. This is great fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying on the side. Yeah. Do, do you think you heard my song? Um, I would say we should come up with some new songs. All right. Have you got your guitar or I link with you? I've got ocarina. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make some sweet rap music. <laughs> With an o- okay. <laughs> I just need a beat. I just need a beat. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Uh huh. I'm feeling it. We're hanging out, and it's quite damp. This word doesn't really rhyme with swamp. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. It was totally worth it. You sing this it as rhymed. loudly as he was singing his poem. No. <laughs> In my head, damp and swamp rhymed. <laughs> tramp, surely tramp. Oh yeah, that would be good. I'll write it down. <laughs> okay. <Continue>. So, <laughs> what are Gwendolyn Skull and Nigella doing on the other bank? I'm. Uh, Please save us. <laughs> Can you, can you dimension Doris? It's kind of the only way. Not the only way. What's the other one? Try again. <laughs> 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 I know I'm gonna regret this, but if you'll do the same for me afterwards. But I'm gonna, like, all my magic will be gone that I have. We can rest! For how long? We've got, we've long got like? No, because be, the woman's coming back in a day. Oh. Uh. <laughs> short rest. Doesn't that help? No, long. No. Like how long is the long rest? Like eight, eight hours. hours. How far did we? How far have you already come to get here? About you ten minutes walk. <laughs> <laughs> you have been on the island around an hour and a half. <laughs> I was like, when you're here, I can relax. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> um, uh, I don't really want to sleep in the dead swamp of evil. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> Especially with you sinking, <laughs> smelling like mud. <laughs> Just try again. If right, it doesn't work, if it, I'll, I'll come get you. Great. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, I understand that this is the thing. Let's try again. It's fun. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> are, you, are you ready? Um, I want to try something first. Good. There's, like, the wood is dead. The wood is absolutely dead. But that still doesn't mean that it's not going to have a floating cover in it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just grab some wood and strap it to my arms as weird are safety you, things. Are you making wooden safety ones? <laughs> <laughs> Make it! <laughs> Please do that. I want some as well. <laughs> Both of you make an intelligence roll. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got negative one of intelligence. Natural 20 on a roll. I really didn't need it. <laughs> I really... Okay, you're telling me it's not going to work, huh? You, Gwendolyn Skull, the master of the ship, in absolute confidence, stride up to these two decaying trees next to each other. Well, at a moment's notice, you just... (laughs) (laughs) And these two trees are now attached to your arms. As you shake them off, you have two logs wrapped around your biceps. What is your own television? I I rolled a two. So what you're saying is it will? (laughs) I mean, 
you just don't know how to attach them to your arms. Like, you, you keep trying. It's just not working. And you can't figure it out. Don't, don't worry. If they don't work for me, then we'll know there's no point. Yeah. I'm just right. going to attach rope to him, so hopefully I'll get some float. Further. The rope is still attached. You didn't detach yeah. it. <laughs> Okay. Don't wrap it around me again. That's weird. So yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll start making our way across. The yeah, both of you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, one at a time again. Okay. Okay. Can I get a dexterity check from you? <laughs> that's better. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yes. That's fantastic. Mm, yes. You begin to run across <laughs> this frozen, I don't need to, I don't bog-like mass. You make it 30, 40, 50. 60 feet, and then there's a gap in the bog where the two sleet storms haven't quite matched up. And you leap! Yes! And you land just short. Oh. At which point, from either side of you, these two large black masses appear from the bog. We are about to enter initiative order where your party is about 60 foot in either direction <laughs> away from you. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, yes, boggy fight music. If you can have sort of, I don't know, a tuba in it, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the highest dexterity character. Uh, that's is Gwendolyn Skull. Is it? 16. Yeah. Right on. So are you. I know you're no, no. Oh, I'm down. Oh, oh yeah, man. Okay, so. S Skull, you're up first. As you're chest deep in this mud, <laughs> these two large black figures appearing from the ooze beside you. What um, would you like to do? Pull me back in, and I'm going to fire at the black um, mass. Okay. With my heavy crossbow. Okay. Um, make your attack roll. Natural 20. A critical success. Oh, yeah. Well done, sir. Thank you. Roll Very damage great. for me. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Were you firing the one on the left or the one on the right? Yeah. Left. Cool. As with my blissful leaning boys. <laughs> Can I as if you actually shout something? Yeah, sure. No, after my head. What's that? What's that? What's the thing with the critical success? Uh, you roll the damage die twice, That's add them together, then add the modifier. Uh, nine only in total. Nine total, okay. So, you release the bolt, and it hits this large creature in the side. The form absorbs around it, bringing it into its body. You do some damage, but not as much as you were hoping. Um, pull me in, seriously. Okay. Um, as a free action, can I shout, Don't pull him in! I have a great plan! <laughs> Fine, <laughs> get on with it. <coughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. Um, I am going to edge into the bog. Mm -hmm. Carefully with my sword ready for attacking yep. myself towards the situation. Okay, you would okay. make a strength check for me. Or unless you're trying to run across the frozen mud like your comrade. Yeah, sure. Can I use athletics? Yes, you can. Then I have 27. 27? Why didn't I use athletics? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I felt like. <laughs> um, you, using your full movement, are you dashing? Okay, you make it just about up to where Gwendolyn's skull is, just ten feet behind him. Dashing you the see <laughs> these two large creatures on either side, and as you stop, the mud underneath your feet gives way, and you begin to sink. You're about up to your knees at this point. Is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, <clears throat> I am going to try and shoot him. Okay, make an attack roll for me. Yep. Uh, 28. 28! That'll hit! Which one are you shooting? The one on the left or the one on the right? 
Um, whichever's closest. Probably the one on the right? Yep, goes for that one. Okay. Damage? Um, that is a nine. Okay, cool. So once again, the bolt releases, digging into this creature's form. Not doing as much damage as you had hoped. Wiggle, no, Alistair. Uh, wiggle, uh, Alistair, wiggle! <laughs> You look out across the bog and you see these two large black forms looming over your colleagues. What do you do? Um, I am going to cast Hypnotic Cane. Oh, it works! Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, explain to me what Hypnotic Cane does. Okay. Everything. So explain Everything. how. Okay. Explain how this spell looks to oh, me. How do you cast it? How do you cast it? Um, I'm gonna. I've got some sand in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Keep it from my home. <laughs> so I'm grounded. So I'm gonna take a handful from each little pouch in my pocket. I'm gonna throw it into the wind and it's gonna create like an aurora borealis. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gonna, you're not gonna keep going. You're not a thing about things. <laughs> that just works for sleep stuff. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Clearly, don't know anything about magic. Magic. <laughs> um, you reach out, and this aurora borealis appears above the swamp. If the creature was able to be charmed, it would have worked, but it's immune to a charmed effect. I'm just still there doing this. You're making it much nicer. Yes. Wiggle charged. bottom. Charm. Um, as a free action, can I shout to him? Is he still holding onto the rope? Yes. With him? She. So she. <laughs> sorry. So beautiful. Um, still holding onto the rope. In that case, can I cast telekinesis on this guy um, and try to launch him um, onto dry land? Yes. Was, he is within cool. range. Explain yes. how the spell looks to me. Um, so around I don't know why they didn't do this in the beginning. Oh, well, <laughs> you, you gotta, uh, technically, you can only move them 30 feet, but what I like to do is put them in a 30 feet degree angle like that, so they literally fly through the air, um, to, okay. and hopefully <laughs> she's going to hold on to the rope, so it can only affect one creature at a certain rate. And I assume you're less than a thousand pounds. Yes. Okay. <laughs> do not ask such things again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Yeah, it's ah. good. Thank you, S. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, basically, um, f as far as they're concerned, it's like an invisible hand. But around my hands, there's a kind of crackling of kind of electricity. Um, as I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out with my mind to yank um, Mr. Skull out of the bomb. Okay. Doing some uh, mathematics, try and hopefully get him at least sure. closer to our end. Explain how the spell looks to me. So yeah, as I said, it's just yeah. this electricity. Like that, but for them, it's just like a whoop like that. Okay. Thing. You feel this electrical arcane energy gather around your body as you feel yourself almost become weightless as you fly 30 feet into the air and begin to coast in the air. Can I get a strength check from you? You don't make this. Athletics, if you want. Yep, it'll yeah. definitely tear up Uh 19. 19. You hold on as you begin to fly through the air. Both creatures will get attacks of opportunity on you, Skull, as they were in combat. Uh, one is a 11 and will miss. The other is a 26 and will hit. Fair enough. Okay, so one of the creatures attacks and it does an incredible 11 bludgeoning damage as this oozy so fist comes towards you as you fly through the sky. So and are now falling. Uh, fall. As a reaction, uh, uh, yes. Just a five creature, then cast it on. Yes. You feel yourself once again become light as you drift towards the ground. So now the creatures go. Have we? Are we actually out of their range now, or are we now literally up there? No, no, because I was doing it uh, diagonally. <laughs> yeah. They will begin to move towards the bank, towards the party. You are still currently out of range. Okay. They're moving and making their full movement. They're probably about 40 foot away from you at this point, towards the bank. You gentlemen have landed about 20 foot from the bank. Okay. 
Okay. So. Got a plan. So. It's the same plan as last time. <laughs> Let's uh, Gwendolyn's skull. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and run to the bank. Okay. The you make it to the bank. Okay, make your attack roll for me. Hang on, I just want to do that. Uh, 20... Uh, three. That'll hit. <laughs> roll damage for me. Which one are you aiming at? Left or right? As always. Left. Left. Oh, that's not good. Okay. You release the bolt and it digs into this creature again and the bolt is just absorbed into its body and as you just see the tip get absorbed, it fizzles away. Um. Okay, so... Sorry, I just realised I'm a remarkable athlete and I did not realise how much damage I did. Roger. Okay, um, I am also going to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. um, you make it to the bank? Yep, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing to her. Okay, make your attack roll for me. That will most definitely hit. Roll damage for me. Uh, no, 12. 12? No, you add 11, right? No, add 4. Okay, yeah. So 11. 11. Excellent. So the bolt releases and it digs into this creature oh, once again. Can I give another um, shot? You would actually, yeah, because you, you both would technically yeah. get another shot. You so both of you, you roll go. attacks for us. Sorry, that's my fault. What was it? <coughs> the as you load the bolt up and raise it to fire, the mechanism jams. Um, I need to fix this. Nineteen. Mhm. Mm and damage is seven. Okay. You release the bolt and it digs into the creature's side again. Alistair, you are up. Um, I am going to cast. Earth Tremor. Nice. About time to. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm going to tremor the earth. Yep. And hopefully kind of collapse. What do you need from me? I need. I need. I need some love. <laughs> How deep is Can your love? How deep is the bug? Yes. As far as I'm aware, it is a dexterity saving throw. Let me just look that up. What? And um, what's the damage on it? Okay. I'm using it at second level. Okay. So, they both fail their dexterity saving throws. Roll damage for me. Cool. Uh, six. So seven damage total. Eight. Two and six. Two and six is eight, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Max! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, you look out at this muddy bog as these two large black ooze like creatures make their way towards you, and the bog itself begins to tremor. You see these. Giant Causeway-esque pillars begin to come up and bludgeon the creature. Nice. Excellent. So, Wigglebottom. And is not prone. If they were if they able were to be <laughs> not prone. If, uh, 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 I shout, strategic retreat! And then start moving. <laughs> Deeper nice. into the woods! We've got that. Like how fast they move in the woods, how far away they? From what you've seen, they've moved if about 20 to 25 foot and around. Right. If the mass is saying attack, then I will retreat don't, we don't only a small way away. Yep. Then uh, I'll cast chain lightning on them. Oh, will you? Do it. Um, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's in the bog anymore, are they? So no, they're not. And it's magical, I think, so it doesn't end up 
No, it doesn't. Well, you stop saying it so sinisterly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I guess what I cast. Do they have any decks? They both fail. Yes, give me some. D8. Yes, D8, Levin. There's my magical D8. You'll like this bit, guys. It's some more maths. <laughs> okay, that's 10, that's 28. Mm -hmm. Plus um, 28, 30, 45, plus 9, that's 54, plus another 5, so that's 59 points of damage each. Excellent. They cast the spell. They're immune to electricity. Oh. The spell takes into these ooze like creatures shuddering through their entire bodies as you see them split in two. For God's sake! There are now four of these large black oozy creatures heading towards you. Are so good! <laughs> Guys, don't worry. If I cast it again on the next one, I think it will help. <laughs> I said retreats! <laughs> I said retreats! <laughs> it's now the creatures go. They are going to move another 25 foot towards you. They are about 20 foot away from you now. Apart Great. from you, who's retreated into the tree line a little bit. Yeah. Gwendolyn Skull! There are now four of these creatures <laughs> making their way towards you. I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Uh, make a quick dexterity check for me. Run 100 feet in the opposite direction to these creatures. <laughs> Alright, give me a minute. 14. 14. You unjam the crossbow. Uh, is that my action? No, that would be your bonus action. Sweet. In which case, uh, now, so do I get two now or one? Um, fire, reload, fire. Cool. Okay, so uh, the, the one that I've already hit. Okay. It's now two things. Can I understand? Yep. Are you? No. <laughs> uh, 18? 18 no, no, will no, hit. No, no, no. It's only 15. 15 will hit. Okay. They're okay. oozes. They're not the most dexterous thing in the yes. world. But crossbows do bugger all the damage to them. Oh, right. Nine. Just saying. Nine. Excellent. At least it doesn't make them multiply. <laughs> I've Once got again, they're <laughs> multiplying. <laughs> You release the bolt and it digs into this creature and it absorbs the damage. Once again, not doing as much as you would have hoped, but doing yeah. damage. Can I, what do you roll to find out about oozes? Uh, history, insight. A nature check? Yeah. Nature, because they're not natural, are they? They are not natural. So, would it be... Arcana? Yeah, sure, roll an arcana check for us, bud. Thank you. Natural 20. 27 in total. Take a moment, observe the battlefield, and your mind is filled with all the knowledge of oozes ever. <laughs> you know all the things about all the oozes. They are immune to acid, they are immune to cold, they are immune to lightning and slashing damage. Immune to lightning? Yes. Why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> also, when they take lightning or slashing damage, they split in two. <laughs> I convey, I say, don't slash them and definitely don't lightning bolt them. <laughs> okay. Um, so my second uh, action. Mm -hmm. Ten. Ten. We'll hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I literally cannot not hit these things. Yes. yes. Awesome. Pretty much. That's Interesting. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's eight. 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 <laughs> and with that. The first of the oozes fall. As uh, the bolt goes straight ass. through this creature, it dissipates and falls back into the mud below. You now have three to deal with. Cool. Are they like Nigella. smaller size than the. Mm -hmm. You don't know. But, but do they look smaller than. They look like of a comparable size. <sighs> do they look smaller than they were when they were larger? Basically? No. No. They're the same. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fire crossbow. And I get a 23. That'll hit. Please sing all of your rolls. I'm gonna now have six damage. Six damage. That was great. <laughs> okay, you release the bolt and it digs it in. Okay, another attack. Yep. And that is 22 
Nice. And nine damage. Nine damage. Okay, these two bolts dig into this large black ooze-like creature as we go to Alistair's go. I'm gonna do Earth Tremor again. Okay. At second level. Both fail. Roll damage for me. Three. And three. <laughs> okay. By the way. So once again, you reach out, doing fair amounts of damage to all of them in the area. One of them dissipates and falls into the use. You only have two left standing. Wiggle bottom. I'm gonna cast a lightning bolt on them. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have put it past you. I'm gonna cast cast scorching ray mm -hmm. at third level. That's two scorching rays per remaining ooze. Per remaining ooze. Okay, so do you want me to roll for them? Yes, please. It's, it's, it's easy to hit them. It is incredibly easy to hit them, unless you're 18. on crit fail. Yep, that will hit. 20. That will hit. Lots. Um, uh, 14. That will hit. And lots. Absolutely. Roll 8d8 worth of damage. 8d6 no, yeah. worth of damage. Um, so I'm going to go roll it. Do you want to roll a per each one? Uh, roll 4 on each. Cool. So that's 9. Yep. 19. 19. Uh, the other one gets 8. Six, 14. How do you want to finish these creatures off? Nice. Um, I'm going to go, don't like lightning, how about these sick burns? <laughs> <laughs> and then whilst they're reeling from the laughter, um, <laughs> two bolts of kind of fire come scorching out uh, t towards them like, like guns um, <laughs> on my fingers. Excellent. And, and I feel With smug. <laughs> You look over at the smug Jeffrey Wigglebottom as he says this line. Great line. And, and these then streaks I... of red arcane energy fly through the air, striking these creatures. They dissipate and fall into the bog once again. And that's where the combat end finishes off. All right. Ooh, as you're standing on the other side of this bog. I think. That went really well. Absolutely. I think it definitely As well as literally anything we've ever done has gone. And look how pretty my lights are. Yeah, they're well. Right, shall we go? Yes. yes. Yeah. Good. Where is the party heading? Towards the tree. The big tree. The big tree. The big tree. Big Ooh. tree. Can I pass the cake tree check? It's a tree. Right. Yeah, he's trying to find what we were looking for. <laughs> Give me one second. You don't need to have something belonging or no Jack. The guy. No. You don't know Jack. Who are you trying to find? The creatures we were fighting before. Oh. The oh. creatures you were fighting before. You cast low crate creature. Where you reach out into the weave, expecting to find some semblance of these creatures, a spark, a shadow. You find nothing. Darkness. Nope, From your understanding, time. roll an arcana check. Uh, that is 13. From your understanding, that normally means that they're either out of range or potentially on a different plane of existence. Do you say that? I think they might be on a different plane of existence. Lord. I would have said the same, just vague. But what the vague thinking I have when they cast their spells when they disappeared. Very strong teleportation spell, which makes me think. And also, it was described to me as planar energy, which makes me think they may have been yes. on a different plane. Yeah, you could have disclosed that information. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I sometimes information comes to me in the middle of battle, um, which after, would have been really useful at the start of battle. <laughs> like, I can't help but the way this brain works. Okay. Okay. You know, for next time. Onward, and hopefully. Mm. Right, let's go. Okay, survival checks from all of you. Mm. As you try to Nat navigate. Natural 20. Natural 20. Really? Yeah. 17. Ah. 16. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you begin to make your way through this wood. The tree is uh, 
decaying or dead. They hold some form of sickness. This whole land holds some form of sickness upon it. As you begin to make your way through the trees, you get the smell of decay. Until eventually you come to a clearing. In front of you, you see this large, dead tree. Branches spreading out for 20, 30 feet, barely staying aloft. And in the trunk of the tree, you see a glint of metal. And that's where we're going to finish this hour off. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand back over to our SM Chloe. Uh, I'm in a puppet musical called Heartwood. It is about a little girl dealing with grief and sickness and stuff, but it's really funny. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's on at venue 13 at 12 o'clock every day. That's 12 o'clock midday, not midnight. Um, I'm not going to plug the Tinder game show because I assume you won't be into that. Um, <laughs> you can feel free to take a fly, it's, it speaks for itself. Uh, this one uh, I think is definitely up your alley. It's called How to Be a Winner in which I recreate every 90s game show um, from the 90s here within one hour. Uh, this bloke's seen it and he's still my friend. So um, I think that speaks volumes as to how good it is. It's at 2.30 at the newsroom every day, apart from Wednesdays.